Wow. Oh my gosh. It is good to see you guys. I'm so excited. Raise your hand if you're excited to be here on a Wednesday night. I am, I am so excited. Hey, my name's Sawyer Wilson. I'm the student coordinator here at North Church. Pretty much what that means is that Wednesday nights are my favorite nights of the week. Make some noise if Wednesday night are your favorite night of the week. Anybody? Okay, a few people. There we go. All right, guys. So you guys know we have a little deal in case you forgot. When I'm up here and I'm speaking, we've got, you guys have a part to play too. You guys are going to have some speaking parts tonight. I know you guys like to talk. So don't worry, if you can just hold your speaking parts for when I call for your speaking parts, I promise it will be a smooth and amazing night for all of us because I believe that God has something he wants to teach all of us tonight. He has something that he taught me as I was preparing for this that he reminded me of, and I believe he wants to teach you something tonight. So grab that note card on your seat or grab your notebook or grab your phone and get ready to take some notes and hear what God has to say for you. Before we start, let's pray real quick. Dear Lord, thank you so much for these students, for these leaders, for this church. Thank you for the opportunity we have to learn more about you. We love you, Jesus. This is all for you. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, hey, I wanna tell you guys a little something about me, okay? So, like I said, I'm the student coordinator here at North Church. I have the amazing privilege of working here at North Church. I love it so much. But I've only been working here, I haven't even been working here for a full two years yet. And something even crazier, I haven't even been serving in student ministry for a full three years yet. I think it's been about three, almost three years I've been serving in student ministry. So it hasn't been very long. There was a time just a few years ago where I was about to finish college, okay? I was at OU and I was getting a teaching degree and I was about to graduate. But I wasn't really wanting to be a teacher at that time. I was just finishing up the degree because I had put a lot of time and a lot of money into it. But I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. And I was a little bit nervous. How many leaders in the room can, can agree? When you're at that stage, you're finishing high school or college, maybe some of you seniors in here, and you don't know what you're going to do. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. Trust me, students, okay? I didn't know what I was going to do. And I came to church one night with my family, and I sat about right there, maybe kind of close to where Ryan and Toby are sitting right there. And some people, some people that are now my friends that I barely knew at that time, Pastor Christian and JC and my friend Fred and some other people were speaking that night here at North Church. And that night, the Lord grabbed a hold of me, and he convicted me. So that means he told me, like, boy, you need to be doing this. So he told me to get off my butt and start serving the church. And I started serving the church literally the next day. I, I started serving in North students. I think it was literally that next day. And I can tell you guys, serving has changed my life. And tonight, I want to tell you guys, I believe God wants to tell you guys how serving can change your life. Because we're in this series called Build Your Kingdom Where? Here. You, this is one of your speaking parts. Come on. Build Your Kingdom Where? Build your kingdom here. And one way, one really important way we help build his kingdom here is through serving. Now, maybe you're in this room and you're like me because I grew up going to church pretty often. I knew and I had heard people say that it's so important that you serve. So maybe you're like me and you kind of know you should be serving the local church, but you're not serving yet. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're kind of like me making excuses. Oh, I don't have the time or I don't have the energy or maybe I don't have the talents or the skills to do that. Maybe you're in that boat. Maybe this is the first time anyone has ever told you you should be serving the local church. Maybe you've never heard that before, and you have no idea what I'm even talking about. Well, I believe God wants to speak to you too. Maybe you're already serving the church. All of our leaders in here, you guys are already serving. A lot of our students in here, you guys are already serving too. But I believe God wants to encourage you to, to amplify that, not just in terms of time, but in terms of your intentionality, in terms of your buy-in. So I believe God wants to speak to all of us tonight. You see, serving changed my life because it made me realize my calling. And I'm not saying that when you start serving, you might become a youth pastor, or you might become a kid's pastor, or you might work at a church. That, that might not happen, right? That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that we are all called to serve. Say, I'm called to serve. 
Point at yourself, say, I'm called to serve. Well, I want to tell you guys and share with you guys a really cool story that I was reminded of when I was preparing for this from the Bible. Now, okay, we're going to do a little Bible quiz, okay? We're going to do a little Bible quiz. Okay, this one's easy. I mean, I, mean, I think it's kind of easy. Okay, what's the first book in the Bible? Okay, what's the second one? Good job, everybody that said Exodus. Tonight, we are going to be reading from Exodus. So if you have an old school paper Bible, go ahead and open that up to Exodus chapter, uh, we're going to be in 39, Exodus chapter 39, or you can pull that up on your phone. It's also going to be on the screen. But before we do that, I got to give you guys a little bit of context. Does that sound good? Because this helps us set the stage and set the story. So throughout the Old Testament, we read a lot about a group of people called the Israelites. Can you say Israelites? The Israelites. And at this point in what we're going to read, the leader of the Israelites was a guy named Moses. Say Moses. Moses. And in Exodus chapter 24, a few chapters, about 15 chapters before we're reading tonight, Moses goes up to this mountain and he literally meets with God. Moses did this a lot. He was pretty legit. He was literally hanging out with God. And this time in, in Exodus 24, Moses goes up to the mountain and he's meeting with the Lord face to face. Very few people at this time could do that. Very few people at this time could do that, okay? And Moses was like the main representative for God's people between him and God, right? And the Lord asked Moses to come up there, and he was going to give him a bunch of instructions and some laws and some commandments for the people of Israel. And there's a bunch of cool stuff. I encourage you to read this for yourself. But one thing that really stood out to me is that Moses was up there for 40 days and 40 nights, and one thing that the Lord told him was a bunch of instructions for stuff for the people of Israel to build. And that's pretty interesting. He wanted them to build stuff like an ark, a table, a lampstand, some altars. Some, he told them how to make garments for the priests to wear. He told them how to make basins to wash stuff in. He told them how to make all sorts of stuff. Like this is chapters and chapters and chapters of instructions. This is the Lord talking to Moses. And then in chapter 31, the Lord switches gears. He says this. I'm going to read it to you. This one's not on the screen, so make sure you listen to me. These are two guys named Bezalel and Oholiab. Those are kind of a mouthful, so I'm going to call them Bezi and Oho. Say Bezi, Bezi. and Oho. Say Bezi, Bezi and say Oho. Oho. All right, Bezi and Oho. We're going to read what the Lord tells Moses about Bezi and Oho. It says this in Exodus 31. Then the Lord said to Moses, see, I have chosen Bezi son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. And then he starts saying all the things that he's given Bezzy the skills to make. And then the Lord continues and says this, moreover, I have appointed Oho, say Oho. Oho, Oho son of Ahim, Ahim Samak. I'm glad it's not on the screen so y'all can't make fun of how bad I pronounced that. Of the tribe of Dan to help him. So he said, I've made Bezzy this most skilled person there is. He can make this, 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 and goes on and on. And he said, and I made Oho like the second best. And they're going to be like the tag team. They're going to teach people and they're going to help Israel build all of this stuff. You see, our big takeaway from that is that the Lord is telling Moses that he has given the people of Israel the skills that they need to complete the work that he has laid before them, okay? And we keep reading, right? And about four chapters go on before anything about that little conversation is mentioned again. And this is a little side note. Sometimes God gives you a dream, right? Sometimes God gives you what you think your calling is going to be. Sometimes God gives you a goal you want to achieve. And that is true, and that is real, and that is from God. But four chapters go before Bezzy and Oho do anything. So if it's not happening right away, don't give up on what God has placed in your heart and in your spirit and keep preparing because he's going to bring it to fruition when it's time. He will prepare you and get you ready. Four chapters go before we hear anything about this. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You've got to wait on the Lord. So Moses keeps meeting with the Lord, and then we, we get to the part that I want to read. There's like four chapters just about the building. And I literally, I went through, I opened up this Bible at my apartment, and I was counting how many times it said they made. They made this. 
They made this. They made this. It's talking about Bezzy and Oho and all their friends. And I lost count. So I Googled it. And it says they made blank 80 times in just four chapters. So you know what that tells me? They didn't just serve and then, you know, stop. They continued serving. They continued doing the work that the Lord had laid before them. They continued going until what God had told them to do was completed. That is so good. And I want to read this. Verse 39, chapter 39 of Exodus, verses 42 and 43. It's going to be on the screen. I believe it says the most important things that I want us to see. This is after it says 80 times that they made stuff. This is after they waited so long to start. This is after Moses has met with the Lord. This is after Bezi and Oho have trained all of the people around them to do all of these things. And this is what it says. It's on the screen. Help me out. The Israelites had done some of the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Is that what it says? Okay, help me out. The Israelites had done all of the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They did all of it. That's why it says they made over 80 times. Next verse says this. Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses blessed them. Let's keep that verse on the screen. It says, so Moses blessed them them. Remember, these people at this time, they weren't meeting with the Lord. They didn't have the privilege that you and I have of being able to pray and talk to God one-on-one. Moses was doing that for them. So to me, when it says Moses blessed them, it doesn't say this in the Bible, so don't quote me on this, but to me, that's like the Lord is blessing them. The Lord has blessed them for the work that they've completed. That's what that says to me. I believe that when we do what God has called us to do, he's going to bless us. Moses blessed them The Lord blessed them for completing the work. I believe that serving changed these two men's life. I believe that Bezzy and Oho, their lives were changed because of serving. Say why, say how come? Why, say why? I can tell you why. Because I just read through about 15 chapters about them. Uh, Nobody else would have heard of Bezzy and Oho if it wasn't for serving. Serving changed their life. That's just one example of how serving changed their life. And I believe that the same way God blessed them and empowered them and enabled them and equipped them, he wants to equip you and me. He has equipped you and me. And I believe he wants to bless you and me. And I know that he has called all of us to serve. I know that one time, three years ago, when I was sitting right there and he told me, Sawyer Wilson, you better get off of your butt, stop watching Cars 2, and go serve the next generation. He didn't say it exactly like that. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it was something like that. North students, I believe that God wants to empower you to take a step to change your own life. This is my sermon in a sentence. Serving will change your life. Serving will change your life. If, If my personal story of that is not enough. If Bezzy and Oho's personal story of that is not enough, ask your small group leader tonight because I bet every single small group leader in here would say serving has changed their life, at least in some way. Serving will change your life. Man, it's really crazy for me to think about where I was three years ago, where I was in my life, where I was in my relationships with people, where I was in my relationship with God, what I was planning on doing with my life, I had no idea. And then I started serving. God took a hold of me, the Holy Spirit convicted me, and I started serving, and it has changed my life. North students, I was 21 years old when I did that. Every single student in here is younger than 21 years old. I don't want you to wait till you're 21 or 31 or 41 or 51 or 61 to serve. I want you to start right now. Whether you're in sixth grade or whether you're in 12th grade, I want you to serve because serving will change your life. I've got a challenge for you, North students and leaders. If you're already serving, this is my challenge for you. I'm gonna pray here in a minute and I want you to pray by yourself. And I want you to ask God, how can I serve more? And and hear me out. I don't mean you have to serve more time. 
You don't have to be at church every single day. If that's what God calls you to do, then do it. But I mean, how can you serve better? How can you serve the church better? How can you serve people better? How can you live out what God has called you to do better? That's my challenge for you, students and leaders who are already serving. Ask God, how can I serve more? How can I serve better? And then whatever he lays on your heart, whether it's tonight, tomorrow morning when you wake up, or a year from now, do it. Act on it. Now, the group of us in here who were not serving, that's okay. I'm not trying to embarrass you, I promise. Don't be embarrassed. That was me until I was 21 years old. When I pray, I want you to pray and ask God, where do you want me to serve? How do you want me to serve? Who do you want me to serve? We have so many opportunities for you to serve here at North Student, not just North Students, but North Church. You can serve in North Students. Somebody's gotta put the note cards out every week. Somebody's gotta set up nine square every week. Did you know it's a group of students that do that? That could be you, you can serve here on Wednesday nights. You can serve in North Kids with elementary school students or preschool students. You can serve in the mix if you're in high school. You can serve the middle schoolers. You can serve on the host team and greet people at the door, help people to their seats. You can serve on the production team, learn how to run cameras and and make videos. Trust me, when you take that step and serve, It will change your life. So if you're already serving, ask God, how can I serve more? How can I serve better? If you're not serving, ask God, where do you want me to serve? Who do you want me to serve? What do you want me to do? And then when we go to small groups, I want you to tell your small group leader what you believe God is calling you to do. And we're gonna help you get plugged in. We're gonna help you find places to serve. I promise you that. We will do that. Imagine how different your life could look a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, 20 years from now, if you start serving the local church. Because I can't tell you what your calling is. Some of you may be called to be pastors. Some of you may be called to be amazing athletes. Some of you may be called to be musicians. But I do know one thing. Every single one of us is called to serve. And serving will change your life. Will you pray with me? And when I pray, ask God what he wants you to do. Lord Jesus, thank you for these students, for these leaders. Thank you for this amazing opportunity we have to be in your house, to worship you, to have fun, God. And thank you for what you taught me and what you taught us here tonight, Lord. I pray for all of us that we remember that serving is not something that we have to do, but serving is something that we get to do. Thank you, Lord, for calling every single one of us to serve. Lord, thank you for changing our lives. Thank you for saving our lives, Jesus, and then changing our lives. Lord, for everyone in here who's already serving God, I pray that you reveal to them ways that they can serve more, ways that they can serve better, God. Speak to them. Lay it on their hearts right now, Holy Spirit. Show them what you want them to do. Show them the areas you want them to serve. Show them the people you want them to reach out to, God. I don't know what that is, but you do, Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray for everyone in here who's not yet serving God. And I thank you for what you're gonna do throughout their lives, Jesus. And I pray that right now you'll reveal to them the steps you want them to take to start serving God. Lord, I thank you so much. Thank you for these students. Thank you for these leaders. Thank you for this church. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done for us. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you guys give it up for the word of God? I love the word of God.